we've gotten everything together. We have the rooftop tent on the old one that we're about to pick up and move to the new one and make sure everything fits. So we're trying not to scratch the aluminum. As much as possible. I mean. But, you know what's more important? I'm getting this for us not, not to dropping. fall. Oh. For us not to fall, for us not to get hurt. Okay. So. Actually, if you get just that corner up there. <laughs> yeah. Get yeah, corner, yeah. As you can tell, it is like, heavy, it is awkward. We are high up off the ground. And our main concern is getting hurt, obviously. That's the last thing we want. What she is doing here is actually lining up the holes. I had to pre-drill these holes. Another way, if you didn't already have the measurements, you could actually put it up there and mark each one that you're wanting. But we drilled from the bottom and actually up through the aluminum, had it pre-done. And after getting the holes lined up, we're going to make sure that we use silicone. One thing that we did run into an issue is because we added the uh, aluminum on top, our old nuts would just barely hold on it was the, the perfect height we actually had to end up taking this thing back off to go get longer bolts and put it back on and do that but right now we're just making sure that everything lines up we're getting everything kind of specked out make sure it fits in the hole properly uh, a couple different things that we realized is using a piece of two by four to have actually set this on would have been beneficial we did that later on uh, when lining everything up but just kind of figuring out where everything goes not easy having two three people did help we had to put another ladder on the other side and just slowly work these in once it was on we made sure that we siliconed it before we did the final drop and then we slowly tightened everything down and made sure that it was nice and tight it worked out really great and haven't had any issues with it so far it needs to go that way like about this back's like gotta go all right so then slide the back babe Okay, I'm moving my hole here. Okay. Right middle, I lined in. You should be on the back too. All right. No, okay. Hang on, it's bent just a little bit, so it's not sitting quite right. Might have to adjust this one last screw back here. You have to lift it and put this. Yeah, well, I need help lifting. I can't. Hold on. Okay, I got all three of mine in here on this end. You want to come around and help you, AJ? Yeah, I can get on the back end and pull it while you push. Yeah, but let's get the silicone on this side going first. There, just hold that. All right. It's good enough. Stay out there. Good. Okay. Bring it down. You want to get on the front and I'll, I'll get back here and pull while you push? It, push. it was not moving for me by hand earlier. Let me grab the mallet. All right, so now we've pretty much got everything completed. If you've watched the last two videos, uh, one of the things that we've added since then is going to be the uh, angle iron down here. As you can see, we added this on with just some screws, um, a bolt with the strap coming forward. And what we've also done is added in the um, mount right there. And we've added up a mount in that front corner. We're just going to actually run a bungee cord between the two. That was kind of the solution for this. And I'm just kind of tying up some of the loose ends on the other stuff. So let's move on here to the rest of the little things we might have missed in the other video. All right, as you can tell, the second part that we finished up in this video that was not in the last, we went ahead and installed a solar panel up here on top with a little tiny through hole. This comes basically all the way down into the battery and it's plugged in the battery full time. So even if the power switch is turned off, it's still charging the battery on day to day stuff. It is a slow trickle charger. Main, mainly to keep this thing topped off when it's just parked here in the yard and not while we're out at camp trying to actually generate recharging, which we normally don't have an issue with our load while we're out there for the time frame that we camp. All right, so adding on our water heater, as you can tell, we've got our water outlet there. You get our water heater here. How we did this, we ended up just having an extra 
kind of L bracket type looking thing. And we just kind of tied it on. So it just sets up right on there. And now we can attach it to any of those little points all the way along the front. And remind you, we had that one up here, so we can actually set up a shower out here if we needed to by using that front one. All right, so the last part that we've got going is we've decided to make this secure. We have riveted in just a piece of a uh, angle iron right there. So when this comes up and locks, that's gonna hold that securely. We do have some weather stripping coming in that's gonna actually cause that to not sit there and vibrate back and forth and cause a lot of noise and wear the metal out. And then for these end pieces here, we're gonna end up using a uh, hitch pin to come in and actually lock and I'll show you that here in just a sec. All right, so as I was showing you here, this is gonna be just a regular standard trailer lock hitch. So you put the key in. And there you go. So that's gonna be the way to uh, secure it out. And you don't gotta worry about when you get in. So we talked with you guys about not being able to see behind. As you can see in here, you can clearly see a vehicle there. But when looking at my mirrors, that vehicle cannot be seen. So that's the reason we wanted to put that in. I did make a little bit of adjustment. I'll show you that when I'm not driving though. All right, so we've got camp set up. We did make some minor changes to what you saw us originally talking about. Uh, this is actually one of our friend's water, so that's not our normal, but we kind of ended up moving the tables back a little bit, making a little bit larger space. This table ended up being kind of too close to the cooking area. We ended up getting one of the steps to kind of help put it up and just some of the basics here it's one of our friend's dogs out here cooking breakfast in the morning everything in here has pretty much worked perfect um this does hold itself up with the uh jack thingies i forget their name but we ended up we like the stick just kind of holding it up that extra little bit it gave us about an extra inch of height it kind of really puts that lighting down on it right but overall this has worked fantastic this is up at ur national forest where we're off-roading but follow up with any of the other changes we did have to see some minor changes we needed like we realized we forgot to pack a hose uh, from here to the water heater and then we needed the one from the water heater there so we're going to order those just some very minor stuff but everything in general worked out fantastic we were very happy with it so some of the costs that i don't go over is although i do buy some of the nuts and bolts i've got these stacked full these are all of my stainless steel as you can tell i've got my pan head, self-tapping, bolts, washers, nuts, miscellaneous. So you can kind of use these a little bit where I can just pull them out and I've got kind of all my different sizes and everything that I need to use. So at the beginning of the project, I did have a lot of these, but I did also have to replace them. So I put the cost of the new ones in, but I didn't add in the ones I already used. But when I bought new ones, I also bought say like a pack of 25 when I only needed five. That's how I added back into this pile to have more to go. Same thing also going for the electrical stuff. I've got a lot of electrical wire and connectors and ends, um, even in another box full of just some basic stuff that I use on my day-to-day -day projects that I didn't have to necessarily calculate in because I had some of them, but then when I also bought some, I bought, say, a 100 pack. You know, I only use maybe 10 of these, but I buy them in the 100. So you kind of have to figure out how to calculate that into your equation. Since I didn't get a real good walk around, the other part I'm going to talk about is stuff like the rooftop tent. We already had that. It did cost us about, I want to say it was about $900 when we bought it. Uh, it was a demo unit one of our friends had at his shop and he was selling. So we picked it up that way. So I didn't count that into the cost of this build because we already owned it, but it is there. So you'll see it's on that list. You could add or take that away for what you guys get. We also have the annex inside of that. We've also got the uh, refrigerator that we had bought. I can't really count that as part of this project because we didn't buy it specifically for this, but it was going to be used with this. So it does kind of count. And as you can see, there is the locks that we added on for the locking on the back. We've got this turned at a little bit of an angle. That gives us the angle. We are gonna fix the other one. We did really like that way that it turned out looking. We might end up going with just some regular 37 inch tires and using the Chevy eight lug. Um, even might even go down to a 35 just to kind of lower this down a little bit. It does sit a little bit high, 
but as you can see when it's sitting even when it rains uh, we're generally going to try to tilt it to the back so the water runs off the back we just haven't gone around to doing that but up here at the front you can see just how close everything comes with the rain it sits up there the only thing that you got to take into account is if you got a different top say you started off with the smitty belt like we got and you change over to any of the other ones you're gonna have to figure out where your bolt holes are going to change and re-drill that so we do got to come as you see we got a little bit of a um edge coming through on that we got to get probably a new top on that but besides that this thing pulled excellent uh we're actually changing these out to the locks i got those inside um that way when we're at camp i can go ahead and lock that down i don't have to worry about anyone basically being able to steal it because on the back you'll have those locked in place where they can't move them you'll have the locks on the door so they couldn't close it and then we've also got the tongue lock that we put on while we're not around it so this to me is the best way to secure this trailer and look forward to your guys' builds all right so real quick this is the basic layout and i'm going to try to put up these screens individually but I had added up everything and I'll just kind of slowly scroll through some of this. I'm not going to go over a little bit piece. You guys can read piece by piece. But some of the stuff that I had discounts for, I would add in my discounted price. Um, if I had to return it, um, I would indicate why I returned it, whether it was a discount, a return, change them out to something different. Um, just kind of help give you guys an idea. Um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And some of these are just different packs, different, uh, you know, stainless tie downs. I got 10 of them to a pack, but I had to buy, I think a total of three of those packs. So there's, I think two of them up here somewhere. And then there's that one there that we added on later on when we decided we wanted more. Um, just kind of overall a little bit of everything. Like I said, I'll put these up so you guys can actually look at each little item. Um, the big things at the very beginning, like I said, you've got the Ico refrigerator which was 750 the rooftop tent was $800 plus the annex I think was about another 200 um, the actual purchase of the M1101 plus the registration was about a thousand and then I added in about $150 for those nuts bolts wires fuses and the 12 volt battery for all the stuff that I pretty much already had because those are things that you would have to consider to buying but I also subtracted out my $150 because I already had all that stuff in my build. Um, I didn't take out the purchase of the trailer because I wanted that in there. I did take out the rooftop tent because we've had that for three years and been using it. And then the refrigerator because we bought that for our other build, but we are moving it over. But those are stuff you got to take into account. Everything else is pretty basic and it is part of that build. So what this is, is coming to is basically the build itself was $6,200, you know, just under it. But I had $2,100 in either discounts, pre-purchased stuff like the refrigerator, the rooftop tent, and the battery that I already had. So taking that out, I only spent basically $4,000 on this trailer. That was my cost to the build. A big part of that too was that aluminum. Uh, one thing to really remember is we went something a little bit more, a little bit thicker on that aluminum. And coming down here on the list, you're going to see that was almost $1,000 by itself when I can find it. All right, here we go. So there's the aluminum, $976 just for that. So if you took that out of the equation, you're gonna drop this down to $3,000 build. If you wanted just to do a frame on it with only say two supports instead of the four on the metal, you might be dropping that down another you know, $200. If you can do all of this work yourself, you're not going to pay someone to do the major cuts. I paid my friend in cash $200 to go ahead and do those aluminum cuts that I needed to do that I wanted to look a little bit better than the way that I wanted it done. So depending on how you're looking at it all over, you pretty much could add in that that's a, a total build cost of either you want to call it the $4,000 or the $6,000. If you had none of it and had to buy everything, you are going to be about $6,200. If you have some of the supplies and like me, you can move some of it over and you've been camping for a while. Um, I didn't count like wheel chalks and stuff like that because again, I already had all those, but this is a basic breakdown. And like I said, I'm gonna put each one of these up so you can actually look at it item by item. So this is pretty much a wrap up of it. We did get these photos before we actually made it up camping. Sadly, I didn't get many while we were out on the trail with it completely set up. Uh, I did get that video in the very beginning you saw. But this has been a great experience. We've been on one camping trip already. We got another one planned here in about two more weeks. 
And the best part about this is me and my wife and my son have had a lot of fun building this. It's been a great experience. We've learned a little bit. My son has gotten to learn and he now enjoys the off-roading just a little bit more because he has a part of this. He helped build it and he did it. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know and I'd be glad to help you in any way you're going to build yours or just bouncing ideas off. I would love to help and see what you guys got and help you guys make one that works for you guys.